Hello and welcome to today's 2017 Editorial Outlook for the Bakken Magazine. My name is Luke Giever and I'm the editor of the publication. For the past four years, our team has been covering the most important trends in the Bakken shale play through our print magazine features, our website news pieces, through numerous topic-focused webinars, and at industry events. We've become the most valuable, prominent, and trusted outlet for crucial information and insight related to the Bakken and we're certainly excited for 2017. Next year, we'll look to continue providing our content to interested parties, along with our many platforms to advertisers looking to maintain or grow their presence in front of the most influential individuals and entities in the multifaceted Bakken industry. Joining me today is John Nelson, Director of Marketing and Sales. Following John's update on the state of our incredibly valuable and exhaustive advertising platforms, I will discuss our 2017 editorial coverage plans, what's new for next year, and the Bakken as our team sees it heading into next year. With any questions, please use the question portal on the webinar platform. And now, I will turn it over to John to discuss the role that our products and services can play in your 2017 plans. John? Thanks a lot, Luke. Uh, one thing I want to do is, before I switch the slide over, I just want to have everyone take a look at all the products that are, are on this particular slide. Uh, we have our print magazine, which we're going to cover, and we're going to talk about our circulation here in a second. And then we also have our online uh, stories, if you look on the computer. Uh, you know, those are things that uh, we're going to really dive into here uh, in, a, in a couple moments and talk about our circulation, talk about our web traffic. But one thing I do want to note that we're not go going to really dive into uh, is if you look on the smartphone, uh, you'll see that it's a, it's a picture of our e-newsletter that goes out. And, and uh, one point I want to make, uh, this is a, a wonderful option for people who are looking uh, as a you know, looking for a digital platform to reach oil execs, uh, people inside the industry in the shale oil industry. Uh, it goes out to 46,000 people. So uh, 46,000 emails, we've built it over the last four years. It's very tailored, very targeted. And, uh, you know, we're, we're happy with the types of responses that it gets. So uh, we're not going to go into that too much, but if you do want more information regarding our e-newsletter, which is very popular, uh, I, I urge you to contact uh, Bob Brown, uh, our account manager, and he'd be more than happy to share more details with you. Moving on, so now this particular slide, we're looking specifically at our print circulation. So our magazine goes out to 75,000. Each issue goes out to, uh, or sorry, 7,500 <laughs> uh, people every, every other month. And, and so we know, uh, based on research that we've done from a third party, that each issue is handed out and shared and read 2.6 times. And then this was a third party that contacted our, our readers and our subscribers and, and did some analysis for us. And we know that every issue that's, every, every magazine that's going out is read 2.6 times. And that's where we're getting the 19,500 total audience. And then in, in addition to that, we also have our future and existing uh, oil and gas producers inside of that as well. And then we do mail a copy to every attendee of the Bakken Conference and Expo, uh, which we'll talk about here later on. Luke will dive into a little bit when we're talking about our bonus circulations. Um, some of the subscribers by job title, if you look at it, We've got 19% in that manager level, that supervisor, engineer, consultant. We have business development. The one piece I, I definitely want to make sure you know you take a look at is 12% of our readers are president. They're they're in that category of chairman, partner, owner, principal, board member. We also have our CEO, CIO, COO. That's another 9%. So you know combined, that's the majority of our of our you know the the highest category of our subscribers is in that president, CEO, COO category. So I definitely want to make sure that that's noted. Um, that's by design, uh, and that's been built over the years, and that's who we're trying to get to. Uh, who advertises in the Bakken magazine? You can see who's trying to get to those people who are our readers. 
uh, you can see that we've got equipment and services, uh, people in the petroleum industry, obviously, consultants, oil and gas execs, construction, and so on. So these are the types of people that are, are, are advertising, the types of companies that are advertising uh, inside the Bakken magazine. And one note I do want to make, 97% of our readers, uh, you know, of, of the Bakken magazine, 97% of our print issue is within the U.S. Again, that is by design. That is what we wanted, wanted to do. We wanted to tailor this magazine for a very U.S. specific audience. Now, as I referenced earlier, we, talk, we talked a little bit about our third party uh, sur surveying of our readers that we did. And we di I, I do have a slide, and if you look at our m media kit uh, that we can share with you, we do have more stats. But I pulled, uh, we have seven actually, and that's what this is pulled from, but I pulled four that I thought were pretty impactful if you're looking to advertise uh, inside the Bakken magazine. 45% of our readers are involved in recommending, initiating, or purchasing our products. 69% of our readers discussed, recommended, visited a website, made a purchase based on an ad they saw inside of our magazine. This is interesting. 49% of our readers prefer print. 13% of our readers prefer digital the issues of the magazine. The other section of readers, you know, the, the other piece in there is people that said, I want to get both print and digital. But I just want to make sure that when we talk about this, if you're looking at, do I do print? Do I do digital? Where do I put my advertising dollars? You can see that a majority of the readers still want that print publication. Again, I don't want to give anything away from the digital side, but Definitely that print advertising is still where our readers want to, to consume their information. The last point here, 70% of the Bakken readers agree advertisements educate and are an important part of the publication. So again, as great as the writing is that Luke and his team you know, do and, and the stories that they put inside the magazine, you know, people are looking for advertisements. They want to see those advertisements when they read that publication. So moving on, now we're going to go away from our prints, and we're going to take a look at our online stats. And so this is on the Bakken.com, and our numbers have continually grown, and, and we feel really good about these numbers. Again, we've had four years to really start becoming a, a, a new source that people go to to get their information about the Bakken, about shale, oil, uh, in general, because um, we cover quite a bit. And so... One thing I want to note here is our number one uh, uh, visitors by state is Texas. Second is North Dakota. So you you know uh, initially you would go well North Dakota is we should be first. But really when we look at our audience and we look at where these companies are and where they're headquartered and and who's on that list and and all the other shale plays that are are inside the U.S. You can see it, it really makes sense that Texas would be our first spot uh, for online visitors. And so I just wanted to point that out. So if you're looking for an option to, to reach oil and gas execs into, inside the shale, shale industry, shale, oil shale industry, this is a perfect platform for you. Um, and, and really what you want to do is, is, you know, come up with a plan on what makes sense for you, but also take a look at utilizing both our digital side, our e-newsletter side, uh, and then also our print, and, and really come at these oil and gas execs from all directions. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Luke. Thank you, John. It's always nice to see a breakdown of uh, who's getting the magazine, where they're at, and uh, what type of media they prefer. I'm going to go through uh, just some general thoughts on the Bakken and then move into our editorial plans uh, and why we're planning uh, certain coverage styles in uh, 2017. When you look at this slide, the, the cover image shot on the left side of the slide really highlights where we are today as both a magazine and an industry. The low oil price environment has changed the way E&Ps operate in the play, how service providers work on on a broader scale and how we think about and understand the Bakken 
in the greater global oil and gas supply storyline. For the past year, we've written about the many changes the Bakken has undergone due to low oil prices. As you'll see next year in 2017, those changes have created a new Bakken defined by new or different thought processes, strategies, companies, technologies, or trends. Version 2.0, as one of our recent covers said, of the Bakken truly has begun. Think about this. Since mid-2014, initial production rates and EURs are up 25%. Well costs are down 28%. Operating costs are down 29%. And as we all know, oil price is down roughly 50%. A drilling rig operating in 2016 can drill 20 to 24 wells per year, up from 2009 when, at that time, a single rig could drill 8 to 10 wells per year. The way wells are completed today is vastly different than three years ago. Wells today use more sand, more propent, more water, more fracture initiation points on longer and longer laterals, in some cases extending past 2.5 miles. With acreage positions held and infill drilling now commonplace, multi-well pads are the norm. And most importantly, the Bakken and other U.S. unconventional plays have become inextricably linked to the global oil scene typically head by, headlined by the action of OPEC. In addition to all of that, the oil and gas regulatory landscape is changing at a rapid pace and drawing attention on both a local and national level. Because of all that that I just mentioned, our team has enhanced our coverage plans for 2017, really in an effort to strengthen the experience all of our readers or advertisers get by investing their time, money, or effort with us. So in 2017, we'll be adding several new coverage areas, and I'm certainly excited about all of them. Uh, and those areas include the latest on refracts, uh, superlaterals, both terms we'll come to know and learn uh, in 2017 and beyond. Uh, we'll also be looking at the national perspective on energy policy and, and maybe most importantly uh, an element of our coverage that will be uh, greatly enhanced uh, moving forward includes major news and trends from the Permian, the Eagle Ford and the Scoop Stack play in Oklahoma. In today's world we've really seen now that individuals or entities in the Bakken really need to know about storylines from Texas to Saudi Arabia, and our team is certainly up for the challenge of bringing them insight on all of it. So for 2017, we have six multi-themed issues planned. It certainly goes without saying that we are also prepared to create additional issues should current predictions for activity in 2017 come true. Speaking of that, it is worth mentioning what we are currently seeing at the end of 2016. Starting in the second quarter, we first started writing about both large and small service providers that noted a change in the industry, a change by oil groups looking to increase activity at the end of this year or early next. In quarter three, that trend continued, but this time it has been much more clear. For two straight weeks in late October and early November, our weekly newsletter that John mentioned was littered with words or phrases like adding rigs, increasing activity, or market balance. As one drilling rig entity said recently, for the first time in two years, operators are looking to increase activity or add rigs instead of doing the opposite. At this point, it appears that 2017 will be a much different experience for all of us in the Bakken and based by the message trends we are writing about, it should be a good year to be in the Bakken. To start the year, to do our part in covering the Bakken, uh, we're going to start looking at well site operations, monitoring, and maintenance. As oil prices have recovered, there has been a push by operators to bring back wells online that were previously uneconomic. There also has been a move by some new to the Bakken operators to reanalyze the way recently purchased assets are run or maintained. I'm excited for this issue as a great kickoff to the year. I think it will really highlight how the Bakken is truly uh, working in that rebound mode and trying to find ways to uh, be economical at loyal prices at the $50 oil range. 
Also on this issue, uh, with two great bonus distribution mailings on top of our current mailing and subscriber list that John went through, it will be a great issue for those looking to get in front of some great uh, decision makers looking to ramp up activity next year. For the second issue of the year, we'll take a look at the way frac fluids, produce water, oil, or NGLs are processed or handled. With the understanding that the Bakken is a long-term, multi-decade play, now understood by investors, tech providers, uh, regional, local, national policymakers, it, it really is always exciting to visit and write about the new technologies, uh, trends, or strate strategies being implemented in the Bakken uh, regarding the way fluids are moved or handled. And I think it uh, goes without saying that given recent pipeline-related headlines, uh, this should certainly be a well-read issue. In May and June, we're going to look at drilling and work over rigs. Uh, with the majority of analysts expecting a major activity ramp up in mid-2017 within the Bakken um, and the Permian and the Eagle Ford, we couldn't have planned a more important theme for the May-June issue headed to uh, what's become the, the, the biggest Bakken-based show of the year, the Williston Basin Petroleum Conference, uh, this year meeting in Canada. Our look at drilling and work over rigs in this issue will, will hopefully uncover the storylines behind the number of rigs in the play, the types of related tech being used, and other important elements of the Bakken's rig count at that time. In July and August, we'll revisit uh, gas capture and utilization or, or the, the theme of flaring. Uh, it's been a, a prominent topic for us since we started covering the Bakken four years ago, and that, that remains to be uh, seen today. This issue, the bonus distribution, really stands out. With an additional 15,000 readers slated to get the issue, I think it's safe to say anyone, including ourselves, looking to impress a great volume of oil field professionals will really have a great chance to do so in this July-August issue. The magazine will be going to three different events, including the Bakken Conference and Expo, our magazine team's own event that we've revamped and reinstituted based on our projections for 2017 and demand from other interested parties. On the theme of the issue, we'll look at how flaring technology and reduction strategies have changed in the past four years, uh, also looking for what has worked to capture gas and utilize that, what hasn't, uh, there's certainly been uh, stories on that, and, and what people believe will be needed in the future as, as more wells are brought online, there's new infrastructure to move gas um, to processing facilities, so that will definitely be uh, an interesting look at flaring in the Bakken. And the September-October issue, uh, that also has an impressive bonus distribution list coupled with a theme that is really paramount to the health of the Bakken. From 2014 to 2015, well costs in the Bakken dropped from 7.1 million to 5.9 million. A lot of that has to do with the work and efficiency gains and the new technologies and the willingness of oil field services and logistics teams uh, to work with their clients. During the past year, uh, those same well cost drops that I just mentioned have also continued. Uh, in this issue, our team will explore why those drops have occurred, how they can be sustained, and why they might rise in the future. The development costs for a well have also changed. Today, rig and drilling fluid accounts for 15% uh, difference from three years ago. Also, um, the investment put into developing the full well pad and the well, 11% um, of that is related to casing and cement. 20 24% is for frac pumps and equipment, 14% is for prop, propant, 12% is for completion fluids, and 23% is for other items. I know that's a lot of stats and a lot of numbers there, uh, but I think the best way to think of, of this issue is that those stats that I just uh, went through right there is, is what our team will start with looking at and trying to tell the story of why those stats are what they are. To end the year, uh, if we haven't added additional issues by then, uh, we'll, we'll still have plenty to talk about regarding oil field technology. Now, for me and our team, this is always one of our most interesting and challenging issues. 
Uh, throughout the year, there are so many new technologies or current technology upgrades taking place uh, in the Bakken or other plays that it's really hard to keep track of all of them and try and explain how they stack up against each other. Uh, I made a note here, if anyone on the call today um, knows about a new technology or has something they're working on that they uh, think is story worthy, please reach out to us now because um, the calls and the information we'll get on, on such topics will uh, definitely be ramping up next year. In addition to uh, webinars and content at the Bakken Conference and Expo in July of next year in Bismarck, we'll also be writing about uh, the best and most promising tech offerings in the play um, specifically in this issue. Now, in closing, I want to thank everyone for attending today. Or if you are listening to this uh, webinar several days from now, uh, thank you for listening to the recording of this webinar. If you want to review anything we said today or have questions, you can replay the webinar at your convenience or certainly give us a call. I really look forward to speaking with all of you this year in person or via phone, however it may be. 2017 could be shaping up to be the type of year many of us have been hoping for, and our team is excited to be the leading go-to outlet for information on the Bakken. To close out today's webinar, I'll now turn it back to John. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate you sharing all that information with us. Uh, I did want to make one reference to today's sponsor, and that is the Bakken Conference uh, and Expo. It's taking place July 17th through the 19th in Bismarck. So definitely mark your calendar if you haven't already for that event. Uh, it, it always turns out to be a phenomenal event for us. And Luke and his team put together some outstanding content. And you can learn more at thebakkenconference.com. And now, as promised, uh, we do have uh, a discount for for everyone on this webinar or if you're tuning in later on. You can save 35% on a full page print advertisement. Again, that's uh, for new advertisers and it expires January 1st. So reach out to us uh, and, and take advantage of that. So if you want to try it for the first time or you've been a, an advertiser, let us, let us know and we can save, uh, help you save 35% on your advertisement to reach, uh, to, to reach. Um, also, we so we'd like to thank everyone for being on today's call. We hope you'll choose the Bakken magazine as an advertising platform to reach all oil and gas execs uh, in 2017. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.